uh, for one, mental health is being talked about now. That mm -hmm. wasn't the case when I was younger. That when I was younger, it was just mental health was considered this scam that the government is is playing on us or something. I it was it mm -hmm. was not accepted at all. And if somebody had a problem, oh, you just have anger issues, figure it out. So mental health is being talked about now. That's that's big. For starters, something that I've always thought would be a good idea is an independent therapist in every Hasidic school that is not paid for by the school, paid for by the government or, or, or someone else. Uh, an independent licensed therapist um, who's not afraid of the community leaders because they can't fire them. Because if they can be fired by community leaders, there's no point in it. Hmm. Um, someone who wouldn't be afraid to, to, to speak out if necessary. But I don't think that's going to happen as much. I think what, what what is more likely to happen is mental health becoming a real um, talked about point. You also mentioned um, doing therapy when you were in Florida and then mental health and therapists being something you'd like to see more of. What is it that you feel like you got from therapy or you learned during that process? I, I ask in part because... Um, my wife does healing work, and that's something that I and her have both been interested in a long time. So I'm curious what experiences you had with that and what things you feel like it brought you. It brought me so much. I was able to get over a lot of trauma without facing without facing my issues. Meaning I had to face my issues, yes, but without... Um, in therapy... I got over a lot of things without without breaking things. Hmm. I I, I know what sense. you mean. Yeah, you didn't. Um, you were, you were able to resolve the issue internally, so you didn't have to do something externally, which would then have external consequences. Right. Yeah, possible repercussions. And, and if you don't have to share, if you don't want to, but are there any things that you um resolved during therapy or, or or work through or um that you might feel comfortable sharing or that you might have noticed that others are also dealing with in that community well if there's someone who's listening now who is dealing with a, a sexual assault in their history um i can wholeheartedly recommend therapy um and 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 I'll give you an example. I used to work at a Hasidic store. Name is not, doesn't matter. Um, but one of the frequent customers was someone who sexually assaulted me when I was really young. And I was able to face him and, you know, deal with him from time to time and not freak out as I otherwise would. So... I think strength, is, is like self-control, is something that I got out of uh, rehab and therapy. Hmm. And, and that's something that um, you also talked about in the documentary was sexual abuse in that community. So I'm curious um, both how common that is and then how do they usually handle that? How do they respond to it? Right. That is another thing that I'm really hoping is going to change. And I think it's kind of changing. So the, the first part of your question was how often it's happening. And for that, I have no answer because, as I said before, the information flow in the community is tightly controlled. And I don't know. People call, if they do call someone, they would call Shamram, which is more of an internal police rather than the actual 911 police. Uh so numbers I wouldn't have for you. What happens next, like what happens after after something like that happens, is unfortunately sad because nothing happens. Um, as mm. The cases that I was uh, not really involved with, the cases that I witnessed, including myself, um, like my own story, um, nothing was really done in terms of giving the kid a therapist or bringing someone to justice but i think in the last few years that the mindset in the community has changed a lot 
towards not supporting abusers as much as they used to because in the past abusers were supported and protected and that's just I don't get it what was the support because they thought this is one of us and we don't want the like what why was it they were supported uh because they probably didn't want the story to leak hmm. if if someone gets convicted the story ends up in in the news if someone doesn't get convicted i guess it's not news i don't know so it was a desire to protect the image of the community i think so and I mean, I'm also curious, you know, for the people who are survivors in that community, how do they emotionally process it? Because I'm, I'm sure you're not the only one. Um, so have you talked to others? And I'm sort of curious how they've responded. How they've responded to what? To well, I, how do they handle it? Um, do you know when you? began talking about your experiences were there other people who came to you who had similar ones um yes a lot of people had reached out uh especially after the movie and um it was varying responses there was this one guy who reached out on instagram fake accounts who said some horrible things said that he was assaulted when he was younger and it didn't do anything wrong to him in fact he's doing it to other kids now and he's not seeing any problem with that wow. and i'm looking at the message and i'm like how how can you think that nothing bad happened if the cycle continues yeah so there's been responses bad. like that and there's been other responses of of uh, there's been other responses of uh, support and also requests for support I, I usually send everyone to, you know, professionals that I know, uh, whether it being professionals, a part of Footsteps or other um, Zaka or other organizations that deal with this. I should ask, because Footsteps is another organization mentioned in the documentary. Um, what role, like, did you, were you a part of any of those organizations and, and what role do they play? Um, so I'm curious sort of how, how people get involved with them or discover them, or is it something that's talked about in the community and people know that they can go to, or is it something that they kind of have to discover in some way? Well, it is talked about in the community, but in a very negative light, uh, they're saying that footsteps is coming into the community and stealing kids from their parents, which is totally untrue. Footsteps never goes into the Hasidic community. That's not their policy. It's their policy not to. Like, to, they don't do demonstrations or anything like that. Um, if someone reaches out to them for help, they'll help, of course. That's how they work. So, in the community, it is talked about, but in a negative light. Um, funny enough, the way I heard about it first was because I was asked to write a, an article against them. And I did my research. I was I was young at the time. I did my research. I looked into it and I was like, hmm, this is. I should I should give them a call. But I wasn't 18 at the time, so I couldn't I couldn't join Footsteps. But I, I joined not long after I turned 18. Thank you for listening. If you like this clip, please subscribe and share the show with someone else who would also like it. You can find The Brennan Murata Show on all major podcast platforms and at brennanmurata.com slash show. Thanks again for listening, and I hope to share more with you in the future.